I put up the video about the book of Thomas, the Gospel of Thomas, and immediately I get comments like this. At least a couple of them. I'm not a popular YouTuber, so I don't get many comments. Thanks to everybody who sends them, even these guys. I understand where you're coming from. If you look at the first saying of Christ in the Gospel of Thomas, it sounds kind of gnostic -y, you know? Like there's this secret cult information that if you have access to, you will be, you know, saved. You will never experience death. I get it. When I read this, I jumped immediately to the next one. Not because that is how I read it. I read it in the way that somebody who knows how to do pirouettes would read. If you know how to do pirouettes, then you are probably a good ballet dancer. <laughs> that was my example. I'm sorry, I'm terrible at these things. But uh, what I'm talking about is, it's a kind of self-assurance, like an encouragement to the person reading, that if you know these sayings, if you understand them, if you can interpret them, that's really only possible if you are already saved. So it's not saying that you will receive salvation, you will never die if you interpret these texts correctly, like there's some magic that happens. No, it's saying that for you to understand them correctly, you will have been already saved. So it's like a nice little message. It's not evidence of something corrupt or evil going on in this book, but I guess some people read it like that. I, um, like many of the things in it, it's very fresh. For somebody who's been reading and consulting scripture, the Bible, so often, this is very fresh. And I can see the parallels, parallels between this and what is in the Bible. For example, when the Lord is talking about knowing yourself. You're supposed to know yourself. Otherwise, you are poverty itself. What it's saying is, if you don't dare to ask yourself difficult questions in the light of God, like, what good am I? What can God even do with me? You'll never learn your strengths, for example. And if you don't learn your strengths, you will not know that you are a child of God, that you have a great purpose, that you are somebody who can grow into his great purpose, his role. And uh, like it just speaks truth to me, the things that are in the Gospel of Thomas. I'm going to talk about the other sayings as well. I forgot which ones I want to talk about. Give me a second. Okay, so this is a good one. Do not be concerned about what you will wear. <laughs> if you are from the world and you want to preach to the world, what you will say is, you know, don't go for expensive brand products because it will make people like admire you and be jealous of you and things like that. Don't toy with people's perceptions, you know. Or maybe don't even care about them. I think I released a video like that, actually. Where you're not supposed to let other people's perceptions control you at all. You're supposed to be free in Christ. But that is kind of like an earthly interpretation of what is being said in this simple saying. When Christ speaks, he speaks from God, right? From heaven. At least usually. And this to me makes me think that he's saying that don't be concerned about how you will look like in heaven. And this is kind of interesting. Like there is this clothing that Christ will place on us, his believers, that's pure and beautiful. So he'll dress us up in heaven. We're not supposed to be able to or even try to, you know, script what we will look like in heaven. And that's kind of something that I've been doing when I make this video. Sometimes I take like 50 takes to get a video out because I imagine, oh, this is how I want it to look like from the perspective of heaven or something like that. And it's not good. It comes through like a crazy filter and it's not really as authentic as I would want it to be. So you're not even supposed to care about how you will look like in heaven. You're just supposed to hit the gas on the path of Christ, of righteousness, of truth, of scripture. Build your life and what you do on the foundation of scripture. And let the Holy Spirit guide you. And when there is rebellion 
bubbling up inside you. You need to deal with that. That's what it is to stick to the truth. I want to talk about the last part of this saying, where we are supposed to observe the Sabbath as Sabbath. That to me is very clever if you think about it. Because what is Sabbath? It's this time when we can take a breather, when we can relax. It's telling us that we should be in the peace of Christ. We should have this peace on us, where we are not worried and stressed out about what tomorrow brings. And we're supposed to observe Sabbath as Sabbath, so we can't make it work. That's what it means. We can't make observing Sabbath something that's like labor, which is what the ancient Jews did, obviously, when they accused Christ of breaking Sabbath and the, he said the, you know Sabbath is for man not man for Sabbath he like dismissed what they were saying they were making it work to relax and isn't that how a lot of people are in the world I guess they get, like get stressed out about having to relax they're supposed to be on a holiday and they're just like losing it yeah uh, I kind of spoke to the world there. It's really about being able to... It's really about being able to... accept our lot. Like what God created us to be. And then, if we don't freak out, we will grow to be something even greater than what we are today. Under God's guidance and light. That's what it is. That's not going to happen if we're not observing Sabbath as Sabbath. Like the important work is already done by Christ.